In previous lectures, all these years, I've been talking about consciousness only on the surface, uh, superficially, in bits and pieces here and there, so that we have an understanding of what the senses, when the senses, when our sensory organs interact with environments, with the outside world, what's the relationship uh, that arises uh, that arises from such an interaction. So I've been talking just superficially. I plan to do it in detail. Consciousness, this consciousness only school. I plan to do it in detail because that's a very important understanding. I get in more and more detail. As I get in more and more detail, those who don't have basic understanding of consciousness may find it very boring because there's quite a bit of terminology to understand. Uh, but I think that we're already at a higher level. Uh, if we're always repeating the same uh, elementary level, we would not get too much of an ad advancement. So I plan to do a little deeper into it so that we understand what, what enlightenment is all about. We all, we all understand um, universal truth and we all understand um, what the Buddha is actually talking about when he wants us to arrive at Nirvana. What exactly that, what does that mean? Uh, so I would venture more into it and if those who listen to me are interested in understanding life more, universal truth and the actual understanding of Buddhism you should be interested in it. The Buddha was born 2,600 years ago in India. And his mission is to bring uh, Buddhism to the world. Uh, the Buddha in previous many, many lives had been studying, practicing Buddhism for many, many lives. And 2,600 years ago, the last life, uh, of the transformed body, uh, the last life, he introduced Buddhism to the world so that we can learn about it. Um, when he introduced Buddhism, it's one universal understanding of Buddhism. There's no such thing as different schools of Buddhism. And later, later philosophers who follow the practice develop it into different schools uh, what's the reason for doing that is different people have different karma and different abilities of understanding inherent knowledge and different education. So philosophers later develop into schools of thoughts of Buddhism so that there are so many roles that you can take. There's not just one role. It's just like coming to coming to this place called Richmond, there's only not, not just one role coming to Richmond, there's various roles. Depends on where you live, depends on where you start. So later they develop into schools. And to learn Buddhism, you really need to know what are those schools that people have been talking about so that you can classify them, categorize them. When people, when pe when some people uh, are talking about Zen, about meditation, about Chan, then you know, oh, that's Zen Buddhism. When some people are talking about Pure Land, oh, you know that is chanting of Amitabha Buddha. When some people are talking about esoteric Tibetan Buddhism, you know that's the esoteric Buddhism. Oh, or when some people talk about the Tin Tai sect, which is the Lotus Sutra, you know that's what it's talking about. Since 2,600 years ago, later philosophers have spent thousands, two thousand years studying Buddhism and has accumulated a lot of wisdom and understanding in the canons of Buddhism, in the literature of Buddhism. And why don't we just open that treasure box, treasure, not just a box, a whole treasure of, the, a whole valley of treasures, open that door 
and see what it is all about. The more we know about Buddhism, the more we know that people, our ancestors, have been studying Buddhism and transform their consciousness into actual wisdom and attain nirvana. We are, we are still in reincarnation. But all these ancestors, some of these ancestors, they already have entered into nirvana, which is out from suffering, out from reincarnation. Unless you're not touched by what our ancestors do, should you learn something about this? What our ancestors have been striving towards enlightenment. Not just every day doing the same thing of, you know, working, eating, playing, you know, enjoying yourself, and, up to, and afterwards, Everybody is awaiting for that word, death. Yeah, it, it seems that when we, the final destination of humans is death. But before dying, we recreate all, all sorts of karma just to create temporary happiness. And we call that happiness. And in the process of creating temporary happiness, we create a lot of sufferings and karmic energy that lead us into the next round of reincarnation. Uh, yesterday I was uh, trying to take a look more at YouTube on uh, reincarnations and I ran into this case uh, you can get into YouTube the case of yesterday's children there was this lady uh, is, her name is, is on YouTube uh, Jenny Cockwell I think and uh, she has a six student in her previous life in, uh, in a place called Malahide, in a place called Malahide. I don't know where Malahide is. And uh, she was the mother of six children, or five ch children, and in a home where the father uh, of the children was abusive, abused not only the children, but also, also her, the mom. And uh, she really loved her children. And, um, given all tenderly mother love, motherly love, and then she passed away at 32, leaving the, the six children behind. And at the juncture of death, she couldn't stand it because I want to look after my children. Now I couldn't do anything. I want to look after my children. Who is going to look after my children when I passed away? And he had, she had this intensive thought at the juncture of death that she was reborn in another place. She still thought about it. So you still have memories of past life because at a, ju at a junction of death, if, you're, if your thought is so strong in a certain thing, uh, you're going you're gonna to live with it in your next life too. And then she actually had memories of past lives and she actually went back to that village, Malahide, and uh, researched and researched. I think she, in, in, in the present life, she became a doctor, a very educated woman. And she did a lot of research just trying to find where Malahide is, where the children are, and she finally tracked them down. Of course, now she is much younger than her children. Her children is already range age between 60 and 80, and now she's only, she's only 32. So life is a whole loop of reincarnations. If you're not interested in ending this, since you're living, what are you interested in? Fame, reputation, money, temporary happiness, creating karmic energy, getting the suffering. Our life, it seems to be that our goal is for enlightenment, nothing else. Nothing is meaningful anymore. What's the meaning of getting to an, another breakfast, another lunch, another dinner, another round of night and day and round and day and four seasons and everything and finally you died. Is that the meaning of life? The meaning of life is looking for enlightenment, looking for getting away from suffering. All right, that's a sidetrack of what I'm talking about. Consciousness only. How do the Yogacara, how do they perceive enlightenment? how to achieve enlightenment. But getting back to what I talk about or the different schools, let's look at the number of roads that can be taken leading to enlightenment. The 10 schools of Buddhism. The first one is reality school, the Kosa 
school or epidemic school. And the Chinese language is Ju She Lun. Because of Kosa, Kosa is Ju She translated. There's a Kosa Sutra, Abhidharma Kosa Sutra, written by uh, Vasubandhu. Ju She Zhong, Kui Se Zhong. That's one school. Remember, I like you to know about different schools of Buddhism so that you know the categories. The Kosa school, the foundation te the text of this is Abhidharma Kosa Sastra by Vasubandhu. And the Sastra was translated and introduced to China from India by Xuan Zhang Da Si, the monk who traveled to India and studied in India for 17 years. He brought back that Kosa Sastra. The Sastra classifies all phenomena of the cosmos under 75 categories. Shishu Wu Fa, every one of these categories of the Dharma, the, the Sastra study, and a student of this school learns the way of liberating oneself from the passions and mental afflictions and attains subsequent annihilation of suffering. Study the passions first, the emotions first, and then try to eliminate these emotions through meditation. The student bases learning on the Four Noble Truth, the Eightfold Path, Four Noble Truth, suffering, causes of suffering, cessation of suffering, and the, and the, and the Noble Eightfold Path. So this school is nowadays what we call the Theravada school. Uh, or in, in, in a term that usually referred to as Xiao Cheng Fo Fa, the Theravada, the Hinayana school. It was popular in China during the Tang Dynasty, and nowadays it's very popular in, in Burma, in Thailand, in Cambodia, in, in many other countries in Southeast Asia. We call it the Theravada school, the Hinayana, or translate the Hinayana into, into an English meaning means the smaller wheel. There's the big wheel, Da Cheng Fo Fa, and the smaller wheel, Xiao Cheng Fo Fa. The smaller wheel and the big wheel. It does not mean that the smaller wheel is inferior. It's just a car that contains less people. It, it takes you to the same destination, but it contains less people. But the Mahayana is a bigger car that takes you to the destination. Don't discriminate. The Hinayana is inferior, the Mahayana is... Uh, the, the smaller car is not as good as the bigger car, no? It depends on, on, on where you go and how many people are going. Okay, so that is the Kosa school. So that's it for explaining that school, the reality school. The second is Satya Siddhi school, based upon Satya Siddhi Sastra, Chang Shi Lun, by Harivaman, uh, translated into Chinese by Kumarajiva in the 5th century. This school flourished during the 6th dynasty and the Tang dynasty, which is in the 5th and 6th century. It teaches one to look upon the cosmos in realms, the worldly realm and the supreme realm. A student of this school is to meditate on the unreality of self and the unreality of things in order to enter into nirvana. Everything is not substantial, it's not real, but we treat them as real. So this Satya Siddhi school examined the cosmos in its unreality and arrived at that reality. And this is difficult to understand because you haven't read the Sastra. You haven't read Satya Siddhi Sastra. It's still regarded as the Hinayana. Actually, we shouldn't classify Buddhism into Chinese Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism, Tibetan bit of Buddhism. It's just Buddhism is practiced in that country, we call it Chinese Buddhism. In Tibet, Tibetan Buddhism. In Japan, Japanese Buddhism. We shouldn't discriminate, you know, what country practice what. Buddhism is just one. It's just different roles leading to it. Three, three Sastra school base is tenets on Madhyamaka Sastra, Zhonglun, Divada Sanikaya Sastra, Shermanlun, Madhyamaka Sastra, Divada Sanikaya Sastra, and these two Sastra by Nagarjuna, and the Sata Sastra by Ari Deva. It teaches one to dispose of the eight misleading ideas of birth, death, and 
permanence, identity, difference, coming and going, and establish correct thinking, one will discover the truth through the study and visualization of sunyata, emptiness. So this school, San Lun Zhong, study sunyata, prajna, emptiness, voidness in detail, and through visualization of voidness and this wisdom of voidness, they detach no attachment to anything, detach from the unreal substance of the world and getting into sunyata through getting rid of all attachments. So that's the three sastra school that belongs to the Mahayana Buddhism or the, uh, the bigger wheel. The fourth is Tian Tai school, which is the lotus school. Why is it called the Tian Tai? Because the founder was Ji Yi, the name of a monk, of a, a high monk in the 6th century, living in Tian Tai Mountain, China. He spent his whole life in studying the Lotus Sutra, Sadatma Puntarika. The chief text is Lotus Sutra. It also emphasized on commentary on Prashna Paramita Sutra, Da Bore Jing, Maha Prashna Nirvana, Da Nia Pan Jing. This school divides each of the ten realms of existence hell, ghosts, animals, azuras, men, devas, sravakas, patiyaka buddhas, bodhisattvas, and buddhas in ten realms into ten divisions and study them in detail. This school teaches one to visualize these divisions to gain a clear insight into the truth. The gospel of the Buddha is categorized into five periods and a doctrine into eight kinds. So, that's the Ten Tai, Sadama Puntarika, the Lotus Sutra. The Lotus Sutra um, is a very important sutra. So there's so much literature, so much treasures in Buddhism, but um, not a tremendous amount of people, number of people would study them because they don't know about it. The Gatlin School, a Vantam Saka school. And this school was founded by Tu Shun in the Tang Dynasty, the 7th century. The foundation work is Gatlin Sutra, a Vantam Sutra. It treats Buddhism in five schools. These five are differentiated into ten schools of thought. This particular school is very profound in theory, in philosophy. It's quite abstruse and it's not easy to study. People uh, studying this school, they must be very highly educated to understand the abstruse philosophy behind it. So it's not very popular, but it's still a lot of people studying this school. Oh, that is the Gartland school, the Huayan Zhong. Six is Chan Zhong, Dhyana or Zen, Zen school. Bodhidharma traveled from India to China in the Liang dynasty, established such as Zen school or Chan school in China in the 6th century. This school does not rely on the use of words or concept. It points directly to the mind and see into one's own nature through meditation. After the 6th patriarch, uh, Hui Leng, in the Tang Dynasty, this school expanded into five and later into seven school. It has been very popular over a thousand years. In China. Nowadays, this school is also very popular in many countries. Actually, many, many people in North Americans are studying Zen Buddhism. That's what we're studying. And some people are studying Zen Buddhism in relation to Chan, uh, of the Chinese Chan, uh, which is not depending on words. Uh, they have special, their own practice. And some study meditation in terms of Anapanasati, in terms of the Theravada school of meditation. Uh, that's, we still call that meditation school, the Zen school, broadly speaking. So number six, Chan or Zen, has been a very popular school in North America, all over the world, even nowadays. Seventh, discipline school, Lu Zhong, Vinaya school. And Vinaya school, it's based on monastic rules laid down by the Buddha. The rules of five divisions, 
Theravada and Mahayana have separate sets of monastic rules. These rules are the basic moral code of the Buddha. And Dao Xuan of China promoted the Four Division Vinaya and founded this school in the Tang Dynasty. The essence of this school is to do good and stop all evil deeds. One must follow strictly on the code of ethics so as to free oneself from the ocean of misery and prepare oneself for Buddhahood. So in other words, this discipline school is the study of every sila, every precept in detail. The monks have 250 precepts, the nuns have 348 precepts, and all the laymen have the five precepts, the eight precepts. They study the morality as laid down as rules in the Buddhist teaching of the Vinaya. What is the logic or the, the meaning behind this Vinaya school? Uh, maybe we should talk about it for one or two minutes. Why do we need morality? Why do we need code of ethics? Because in our interaction with the outside world, our sense organs interact with outside objects. And in the process of these interactions, we create attachments. And because of attachments, passions, emotions, uh, mental afflictions arise in our mind when we interact. You may not realize it. When your eyes see, when your ears listen, when your nose smell, when your mouth eat, all these senses when you interact with the outside world, actually you are creating feelings, emotions, and passions, and you're being led away by these without noticing them. How do we overcome these passions? For example, passions of jealousy, hatred, disappointment, greediness, depressions, arrogance, self-deceit, egoist, egoist feeling, all these different mental afflictions in us, in us. When we interact with the outside world, these are, this automatically come out and dominate us. Dominate us to such, such a way that we suffer from them. An average individual just responded with emotions. When something really sorrowful comes out, you just cry. You just control yourself. You cannot control yourself. When something uh, wrathful come up, when something that create your hatred comes up, you just feel angry, you want to fight, you want to yell, you want to scold, you want to do all kinds of emotional reactions to it. You just respond it with emotions. Why do you respond with emotions and in the process of emotions you create comic deeds of killing, lying, sexual misconduct and all this? Why do we have that? Because we cannot control ourselves. Our concentration, our wisdom, are not sufficient enough to control all these things. That's why we depend on what? Our philosophy of morality in our mind to control them. We know then stop, do not kill. Stop, do not steal. Stop, do not commit sexual misconduct. Stop, do not lie. So the Buddha knows that it's difficult to use your own internal concentration and wisdom to overcome all these, you need someone to tell you what you should not do. That's the morality. That's at the front door. In other words, you need security guards at the front door because you don't have that wisdom in you to guard yourself. You need security guards. These security guards are the core of ethics. That's the purpose of the discipline school. They're absolutely important. Imagine if monks and nuns are without morality. How can you call them monks and nuns? If the monks do not have 250 precepts, if the nuns do not have those precepts, if they just do what they want to do, there's no sangha order. If everybody is allowed to kill, to steal, to, to, to commit sexual misconduct, what would become of the society? Even humans themselves create certain code of ethics. Not to say code of ethics, ethics which are so minute, so detailed as created by the Buddha. So the Vinaya school is absolutely important. You see what I mean? So that's the discipline school.